uh, welcome uh, to the full stack uh, you know full stack web application development uh, you know webinar uh, hosted by knowledge hub uh, just to give a short brief about me uh, my name is mehul chopra and i have been programming and training for um, a good 13 years i am currently a principal javascript consultant and uh, i uh, you know i'm even a full stack programmer and uh, i have uh, you know held positions of uh, being a solutions architect in my previous organizations where i worked uh, I, I i work with uh, i work as a subject matter expert with uh, knowledge art now uh, you know what we see on the screen is something that every web developer in in ourselves would be able to relate with okay and uh, you know many of you all would be uh, you know say starting up in your career many would have already started up in your web development career many would have been experienced in their web development career but we all associate you know with this diagram that we see uh, is uh, where uh, you know traditionally uh, you know the web applications that we ever started making with you know the first time when we started making web applications uh, it was uh, you know there, there, there's there's a web browser there's a web server uh, the web browser wants to ask something to the web server it sends an http request uh, the web server sends that thing in the http response uh, the web browser wants to ask one more thing from the web server again send an http request get back an http response so it was more of a you know uh, very http request http re response kind of model uh, that you know using which we made our web applications again we all can associate with it uh, this is how we started uh, you know making uh, doing web application development but uh, you know there was definitely uh, you know one uh, kind of uh, you know uh, one of one kind of thing that which bothered the user experience was uh, the reload of the web page okay so uh, definitely you send an http request that will initiate a reload on the web browser okay because that's how the web browsers have been designed then we kind of uh, like you know graduated ourselves uh, you know from this and uh, where we were of the opinion that like you know if i have a web page and only some part of the web page has to refresh only some part of the dom in the web page has to refresh why make an why make an http request and cause a reload of the entire web page when only just a part of the web page had to update itself we went and learned ajax you know this is what we did uh, you know we were introduced to the xml http request object okay the xhr object uh, we used libraries like prototype.js i still remember those days you know we used uh, then jquery ajax and uh, we we learned ajax okay we learned ajax and where we realized that you know we can use ajax where the javascript code in the web browser makes an xhr request to the web server and the web server sends back an XHR response. The beauty about an XHR request, which we all know was that it does not cause a page reload. Okay, so it was all to uh, like, you know, stop that, uh, you know, stop that page reload uh, from happening. Okay, we, where we used to make these, uh, you know, uh, this, this Ajax request. And yes, uh, like, you know, uh, as we graduated further in our careers, uh, we started coding everywhere. You know, we we started making web applications uh, where we wrote some code which communicated with the database. We wrote some code, you know, that had the service layer. It had the DAO layer. Uh, we then we even wrote code uh, which had the controller. We, and then we even wrote code where uh, the controller used to send the dynamic data to the view, and then the view would be sent back to the browser. Okay, so this is what we we have been doing, and and in short, we have been full stack developers all along. Yeah, yeah. As in, yeah, def definitely we have been doing full stack web development all along, okay? But then, what is this seminar about, okay? Or what is this thing where full stack web development is gaining that steam, okay? As a totally different career path, okay? What is that thing that is causing full stack web development to reinvent itself and, you know, be a separate uh, uh, vouched for uh, career uh, specifically? Yeah, you go. Okay, is the prime reason you know where full stack web development has gained steam of late? You know where you hear the Angulars, you hear the Reacts, you hear the Ember, you hear the uh, you know the Woo. Uh, it's gaining steam purely because of a kind of web development which happens in you know which which is uh, you know which happens with most of the web applications today uh, is single page application development okay so spas you know you would have definitely heard about the word spas uh, so uh, the idea is very simple okay the idea is very simple whatever view 
building whatever view dynamic data building that you used to do at the server side and you know and then finally eventually send the html response to the client you do that now at the client side okay so your client that is your web browser kind of becomes a thick client and your web server kind of becomes a thin uh, you know component in your architecture and what what typically happens in a single page application okay but now why is it called single page okay is that initially there will be an http request that will be sent to the web server to load the base page of your single page application the only html page of your single page application along with definitely http request will be sent for all the css for all the js okay uh, that needs to be downloaded from the web server to the to the web browser only at the start only at the start uh, there is this uh, you know there is this load time that happens after that whatever dom interactivity that you want to do whatever uh, dynamic view generation you want to do based on the data even for that matter okay even for that matter even imagine that you have a web application okay where you have uh, the home navigation menu you have the about us navigation menu and you have the contact us navigation menu even when you click on home to about us yes the about us page will be shown in place of the home page but there will be no page reload because that kind of interactivity of inter page navigation is also going to happen at the web browser side rather than sending an http request to the web server you go from about us to contact us the about us page will be replaced by the contact us page but again without a page reload all the interactivity happening at the web browser side and no need of sending an http request to the web server okay because at the start itself the base template of a single page application and all the resources the all the javascript and css resources that you need for your single page application would have been downloaded at the start after that it's a it's a show that completely runs on the web browser for every client so which means if your your web server is kind of free I, I, and, I, and and that's what i'm showing you know web server is kind of a thin uh, component in your architecture now that that's with regards to the dynamic view generation okay that's with regards to the interpage navigation yes my, you know my single page application handles it but then what about the data yes for the data most almost every single page application makes an xhr request to your web server only for the data not for the view only for the data and the web server would send a response uh, which would have again only the data not the view okay because all the view manipulation already happens at the client side the web server has nothing to do with the view okay so in in short your web server becomes something like uh, existing only for exchanging data okay in fact in short it becomes a web service okay uh, now you know when you have when you have when you define when you when, when you divide your architecture in this kind of way uh, you usually end up having two projects okay one is called as a project front end another one is called as a project back end okay now project front end can be made using various stacks okay uh, you can make it using react you can make it using angular you can make it using ember js any any of these uh, you know single page application frameworks are there you can make your project front end using that uh, we'll be using angular for the purpose of this webinar the project back end you can make it again using any tech stack the web server implementation uh, which is which is going to be a very simple implementation because your web server is going to be something which is going to just exchange data with the client it will have nothing to do with the view or the presentation of your web application so the project backend can be written in any technology stack you can use a java you can use a you can use python okay you you can use uh, .NET, okay, and uh, PHP, uh, but we'll be definitely using the Node.js Express, uh, Node.js Express.js stack, okay. Uh, feel free to use any backend. You could use MySQL, you could use Postgres SQL, uh, but we're going to use MongoDB, okay, because this kind of becomes, uh, you know, a very, uh, uh, like, you know, a very popular stack called as the mean stack, okay. So MongoDB, Express, Angular, Node, okay. So that, you know, that becomes the mean stack. But feel free, you know, feel free to change anything in this stack based on the needs of your team and, you know, based on, you know, what your company professes uh, as the language or as the technology of choice. Okay, so it's it's, it's not being rigid uh, specifically over there. All right, you know, so I do not like, you know, mincing with a lot of words. Uh, code speaks a lot. Okay, so uh, demo time. You know, let's let's have a demo. Now, uh, the application uh, that I'm going to demo to you, uh, if I have to show you the application, how it works, uh, this is the application. Uh, say I load it up at localhost 4200. It's a very, very uh, bare bones library management application. Okay. Uh, 
I call it as read and grow. Uh, it has two menu options: uh, add books, list books. Okay. Uh, when I click on list books, you show it. You see a table of books. By the way, these books are coming from a backend database, which is MongoDB. You know that I have set up over here. Okay, so it, it's definitely coming. Uh, you know from the backend database. Uh, so you know if I have to go to collections. Uh, I've just set up the MongoDB. So I have a database. I have books table. This is where from where uh, the data is coming over here, which is showing up in this list over here. Uh, I go to add books allows me to add a new book. Okay, so I can add a new book. Uh, say, uh, yeah, coming back. Say, add a book. Say, programming in C, 900, 120. Okay, save. It says book save successfully. Very simple. Very simple alert. Clears up the form. Coming back to list books. I'm able to see programming and see added over here. Okay, so a very simple application uh, just for the purpose of the demo. Okay, now the idea about this application and the idea about coding this application, you know, in front of you, okay, is just so that you get an idea about the breadth of things. Okay, yes, uh, the things that I will code, you may not understand everything. Okay, but that's not the goal. Okay, the goal is not to get into the depth of things, the goal is to get into the breadth of things. Uh, it's for you to feel comfortable uh, like okay yeah as in these are the things that we cover at the client side these are the things that we cover at the server side okay these are the things that we cover at the database side okay so i have a hand i have a hand that's been raised and that's been raised by uh philo maria abraham oh yes oh, no that's been raised by uh dr mohammed uh, dr mohammed uh yes please tell me uh did, do you have something uh, something to say, uh, Dr. Mama? Uh, you you probably got to unmute yourself, or probably keep the questions for a later point in time. Okay, just just keep your questions at a later point in time. Surely I'll I'll be there to answer them. All right. So uh, you know the idea is yes to get into the breadth of things rather to rather to get into the depth of things okay it's only when you feel comfortable seeing the breadth of things that oh okay as a full stack developer i'm going to code this at the client side i'm going to code this at the server side i'm going to code this at the database side then only you would feel confident in terms of okay fine you know i like this field and i would want to go into the depth of things okay so the purpose of this demo is just to get into the breadth of things so follow along uh, there may be things that you may really not understand but you know you should get a good enough uh, idea about you know making this uh, kind of web application for our demo now i've gone ahead and uh, i've created the project front end uh, which is uh, the angular project uh, over here if you see this is the project front end uh, it uses the version 10 of angular kind of the latest version and i've gone ahead and even created the project backend okay these are empty projects that i've created this is a simple node.js project uh, as of now, a very simple Node.js project, but just empty project. This is also an empty project. Okay. Now, uh, I will go and, uh, you know, first run my project front end. So, LIB app client is my project front end. It's an Angular application that I've created. So, just to see whether, you know, I was able to successfully create an empty Angular application, I'm just going to do an ng serve. Uh, okay. It says the port is in use uh, because of the demo application. So, I'm going to open up on a different port, say 4201. So waiting for it to launch a server uh, on which I can see my project front end, uh, which is the Angular application. So this is a empty application. Okay, so I just want to verify whether I created the empty empty application in a proper way. Okay, so yeah, it says this, uh, and I can like you know just go to the link, and yeah, there you go. Uh, this is this is an indication saying that you know I was successful in creating a proper uh, angular application okay now uh, just to give a very short idea about things we are not going to get into the depth of things so this is the angular application has the src folder it has an index.html this is the base template that i was talking about okay in that the app root component loads up okay now in the body the app root component loads up now what's the app root component so if i go to app there's app component html okay uh, this is the app root component okay which is which is the code that we're seeing over here okay uh this this is the one and how do i know that it's uh referenced it's referenced by the tag app root very simple uh in, in angular every component has an html and it even has a ts file a typescript file which tells me that this is the app root component if you see the selector says it's an app root component okay and to assert our belief more i can remove this pre-generated code uh by the angular command line save it and i come back and i should see a white page you know which really asserts that yeah you know we are probably moving at the 
at the right thing. Now, I have the HTML and CSS code for this already ready for me okay because obviously i'm not going to waste time in you know writing the html and css for this uh, you know from the ground up level so i already have it ready for me in uh, one of the other scaffold projects so what am i going to do is i'm just going to probably uh, add a folder to my vs code workspace uh, so that's going to be desktop so it's going to be scaffold so i'm going to just add the scaffold project uh, so over here i have a styles.css uh, I, I actually don't need this okay so over here I would have the uh, index.html base template. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to come to the index.html of my Angular project and I'm going to paste this here. Okay, and then uh, I have a base template even for the app component HTML, uh, which is the you know the GUI that you saw. So I'm just going to copy that. It's just plain old HTML GUI, nothing fancy. And I'm going to come to app component.html and paste that over here. Okay, so plain old HTML CSS uh, static GUI, nothing different. You can see it when I save all and when I go back to my application over here. There you go. Okay. Uh, again, with static data, but at least I have uh, you know the base HTML and the base CSS uh, kind of ready for me. Okay. So uh, this is this is what we see. Now moving further, uh, definitely I do not want uh, like you know that the list books and the add books should show up in the same page. List books should show up only when I click list books. Add books should show up only when I click on add books. Okay. So before that. So what am I going to do? Okay, what am I going to do is I'm going to create a separate component for list books and I'm going to create a separate angular component for add book. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Pretty simple is I'm just going to open up uh, my terminal open up a new terminal uh, for angular specifically and I use the angular CLI to generate a new component. So G for generate C for component. Okay, so I would create a component for uh, you know the book list. And I would create a separate component for book form. All right. Uh, okay. So what do I see is, uh, you know, that the CLI uh, does uh, in a command line interface does all the work for me. It creates a folder book form uh, where the component has its own CSS, it has its own HTML, and it has its own TypeScript code. Again, it creates a component book list. It creates a folder book list. It has its own CSS, own HTML, own and own TypeScript code. Okay, now what am I going to do is in a piecemeal manner from app component.html, I'm going to move some code in their respective components. Okay, so list books, okay, list books, uh, you know, which is this div over here. Uh, list books makes sense to have list books where uh, in the list component. So I'm going to cut this from here and I'm going to go to book lists HTML file and I'm going to move this component over here, static in a very static way. Okay, uh, and and in app component over here at this place okay uh, say i will i will use the i will use the list component book list component okay how can you use the component in angular you can use tags okay what is the name of the book list component tag always go to the ts file have a look at the selector and take the app book list tag and uh, i can i can use it directly over here you know, i can use it so just to verify things are working fine or no i can use the app book list tag and you know when i just save this yes i'm still able to see the list books component but this time it's a separate component i'm going to do the same thing for add book okay i'm going to take the markup related to add book cut it from here uh, go to book form html and paste that here okay and then what am i going to do is i'm going to include the book form component here in the place of where there was the html markup how can i include a component in another component in angular I need to know the tag. So what's a tag? You, you can go to, go to the TS file of book form component in the selector. This is the custom tag. I copy that and I use the tag here. Okay, and uh, just save save all. And then, yeah, I'm able to see the same thing. Okay, but one good thing is that these two things are now coming from separate components. Now, the purpose of making them as separate components was, you know, if I go to the demo application, when I hit the route, when I hit the list, when I hit the URL list, I should see only the list books component. When I hit the URL add, I should see only the add book component. Where? Over here. Okay, over here. So this is not right. You know, this is, I don't want both the components to land up in this div over here. I want that the book list component should land up over here. Okay, when I hit the list route when i hit the list url 
the book form component should land over here when I hit the URL slash add. Okay, so this basically takes us to uh, you know the thing of Angular, uh, which is called as Angular routing. Okay, so there is a module in Angular called as Angular routing, where you give a relationship between uh, the URL and the component that needs to load up, say at, at a particular location in your HTML. Okay, which actually then gives you a feeling of a single page application. So the Angular router module is the one which is responsible that gives you a feeling of a single page application. Have a look when I go from add books to list books. Do you see even a page reload? But yeah, for the user, it's like I'm moving from one page to another page, but without a page reload. Okay. Now, how do you do that? Uh, it's pretty simple. So uh, in the app folder, you'll have uh, you know a file app routing module, okay, which has this routes array. You can first of all import your two components. So import a very simple TypeScript import, current directory, um, book form, book form component. So import the book form component class. And then import current directory book list book list component uh, the book list component class. All right, and then in the routes array, give a JavaScript object where you specify the path that if I hit a URL add, I'm supposed to show the component book form component. Okay, give one more JavaScript object. If I hit the URL list. I'm supposed to see which component I mean, I'm supposed to see the book list component. Okay, very simple routes, you know, that you give over here. Okay, and once you're given that, now when I come to app component.html, I don't have to do this, you know, because I don't want to see both the components at the same time. Okay, but what do I want is that if the user hits a URL add, the book form components view should be shown here in this section. When the user hits the URL list in the browser, the book list components view should show up here at this place in app component. So I see that this is a dynamic place. This is a dynamic outlet for my router. What do you do is from the Angular routing module, you can use a tag called as router outlet. Okay, you can use a tag called as the router outlet tag. Okay, this will ensure that based on the URL, the appropriate component GUI shows up in this section of your div. Okay, that, that's router outlet. Uh, and I save this one. I go back here to my application. Yes, as always expected. You know, when I, whenever, whenever, whenever I have not hit any of the URLs, I see an empty div over here. It's expected. Now, suppose I hit a URL slash add. I see the book form component loading up at the, in that part of the page. Suppose I hit the URL slash list. I see the list book component loading up in that particular part of the page. Right. But now obviously I do not want the user to be hitting URLs like this. It should happen when I click the links over here. These links. Very simple. How to integrate them. Uh, just find the links. So these are the links. These are the anchor tags uh, to the anchor tags. Uh, give them an attribute again from the router module of angular called as router link equal to say when the user clicks on add books, I want to take the user to the add route. Okay. Again, give a router link. Uh, when the user clicks on list books, I want to take the user to list list route. Okay. That's the only thing that you need to do. And saving all. Uh, this is our application actually. So if I just hit the home page, this is the home page. Uh, I click on add books. Shows me add books. I click on list books. Shows me list books. And look at the look at the fluidity. No page reload as if it's a desktop application and the user feels that he's moving from one page to another page. Okay, but you know, that's the USP of single page applications, uh, you know, that we're seeing over here. Okay, great. Now that's, you know, for the initial coding that you have to do at the client side. Remember guys, there's going to be a breadth of things. You're going to move from client to server, server to client, always as a full stack developer. So we kind of pause our client side development. Okay, and uh, can we write a server? Okay, can we write a server? Uh, which serves these list of books to the client. Okay, uh, and the server should read should read the list of books from the database uh, over here. Okay, it should be able to read the list of books from the database over here. Now for that, yes, you'll have to close your project front end, and that's what a full stack developer does. He goes from one hat to another hat. Uh, you'll have to open up your project backend. Okay, which is going to be uh, LIB app server. Okay, it's a it's a very simple Node.js application. But what am I going to do is 
I'm going to install some server side modules. So I'm going to create a separate terminal for my server. I'm going to install some server side modules. So npm install hyphen hyphen save. Uh, say I'm going to use express. Okay, so I'm going to use express uh, specifically. It's a nice framework for making uh, server side applications. Uh, so you know I should see express being downloaded here. Uh, I'm going to use uh, even uh, course. Okay, for for because because you know if you have if you have read about cores, uh, your Angular client is going to be on a different domain, and your server is going to be on a different domain. If your Angular client has to contact your server for the data, uh, you know to allow requests from different domains, you know you need to enable cores. Okay, so do read about cores, you know when you get time. Uh, and we're going to use Mongoose. Okay, we're going to use Mongoose. Now Mongoose is a nice library which helps your Node.js, Express.js application. Uh, to interact with the MongoDB database. Okay, the MongoDB database, I already have it set up here on the cloud. Uh, and this is basically MongoDB Atlas through which, you know, you're able to see my database. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this is this is my database. This is a cluster, uh, you know, that I've set up. And uh, I'm going to make sure that my Express application, uh, my server side application is able to connect, uh, you know, with the database. Okay. Now, standard server code. Okay, standard server code, uh, which you write, you know, in every, Node.js application. It's going to be very standard in the server side code. I'm going to create a new file which is going to be server.js as in it's it's going to be my server. Okay. Now I want the server to be running on some specific port and then it should serve the data to the client. Okay. So I'm going to do that as standard sand stuff. So I'm going to require express. Okay. So it's a nice framework for making web applications using node. Okay, I'm going to require a module from Express called as body parser. Uh, this is so that my Express server can read JSON data. Okay, from the request. So body parser. Okay, and then I'm going to require cores to enable cores so that you know clients from different domain can hit my server. So require uh, the parse module. Okay, and then I'm just going to create an Express app by just calling the Express function. Okay, uh, the port on which my server is going to be running is say 3001. Okay, and then uh, my Express app is going to use, okay, it's going to use body parser dot JSON function because I want that my Express server should be able to read JSON data from the request. Okay, because that's how my my client is going to send the data to the server. Uh, app dot use, make it use course. So call the course function so that clients from different domains can hit my server for the data. Okay, though this is not a good idea because you should be kind of you know, whitelisting your clients, but uh, like you know, if the request comes from this domain, then only accept it. But as of now, this is open to all. Okay, and just for the purpose of demo. And then on the Express object, let's start our server. Call the listen function. Uh, it listens on a particular port. The callback function will be called once the port is free for the server to run. Uh, when the callback function is called, I'm just going to do a console.log, uh, which is going to be a very simple one. Server listening. Okay, so server, very simple server listening on port. Uh, port say port specific okay now uh, just to run my server and see whether am i able to run my server uh, standard stuff node mon i'm going to use server.js okay so this is uh, something where uh, you know if you make changes in your server side application node mon is a utility that's going to redeploy your changes in the server side application and here it says server listening on port 3001 okay so you have made a production ready node.js server in no time okay so uh, you know that's the beauty about node.js and express.js now uh, I want that my server should be able to connect to the MongoDB database over here. Okay, so uh, now I, I'm following some structure. You feel free to follow your own structure. Okay, it's just a structure. It's just a suggested structure. You're free to do what you want to do. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder, which is going to be say dbconnect.js. Okay, because it's going to have the code which is going to connect to the MongoDB database. I'm going to require the mongoose module. Okay, the mongoose which we installed in order to interact with our MongoDB database. Uh, then there's going to be a URL for connecting with the MongoDB database. Okay, so that URL, I'm going to get it from MongoDB Atlas. So I'm going to connect here. I'm going to say connect uh, your application. Yeah, this is the URL. Standard URL, you just have to copy it, paste it here. The only difference is admin at the rate, my password. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close my cluster down later. So no thing of exposing my password and uh, the date the database that i want to connect to so the database that i want to connect to uh, is if i go to collections so in mongodb there's a concept of collections and you know database and tape uh, so there's no tables it's called as collections and you know there's a database so the name of my database is libmgmt underscore demo so libmgmt 
underscore demo. Okay, and that's it. Now I'm going to write a simple function uh, which is going to initialize my connection to the database from the server, say the init function. Okay, uh, standard stuff. Fung, uh, mongoose dot you know call the connect function, pass in the URL, pass in a JavaScript object with some options that you should pass. You know it's just like very hard coding kind of thing. It's very mechanical thing. Use uh, new URL parser true. This is what MongoDB suggests. So you just have to use it. So use unified topology true without getting into too much of things. And then uh, on the mongoose, we can call the connection attribute, you know, which should give us the mongoose connection, uh, which should give us the MongoDB connection uh, specifically. And then, uh, you know, connection dot on. If there's an error, a callback function uh, will be called. Okay, where we can just do a you know if there's an error connecting with the MongoDB database. Okay, so this is plain old Node.js programming. Okay, guys. So console uh, dot log. Say I'm just going to say error in connecting with the uh, DB. Okay, if I was able to successfully connect, so connection dot on open. You know, open event was fired. Uh, this callback function would be called. Where at the max, you know, I can just put a console dot log. Uh, say uh, you know, say DB connection successful. Okay, there are there could be various ways in which you could connect this. This is not a recommendation. This is just like one of the ways that probably I like it. Okay, now I'm going to export this init function. So standard export module dot exports. I'm going to make it available to the entire world, only the Node.js project, the init function. Okay, so I'm just going to just say module dot exports in it uh, specifically. Okay, so that's my uh, that's my DB connect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to require this DB connect module in server.js. Okay, so I'm just going to say const uh, say uh, const require okay require current directory DB connect module okay and require specifically the init function from DB connect module which we wrote okay and I'm going to call the init function once we are able to set up a server properly which is you know at that time this callback function is going to be called and I'm going to call the init function to see whether now it is able to connect to the database or not. Okay, I just save my server. Hey, look at that. Uh, DB connection successful. Yes, my server has been able to successfully connect with my MongoDB instance also. Okay, standard code. All right. Now, uh, uh, I want that uh, you know my server should now you know once I'm able to connect you know to my server, my server should expose an endpoint. To my angular project, you know my is my server should expose an endpoint to the angular project which when the angular project calls my server uh, for that, you know hits that rest endpoint. It should return back to the angular project a list of books from the database. Okay, so how am I going to create rest endpoints in express JS very simple. Okay, uh, it's part of express JS is I can do app dot get because it's going to be a get call that the angular project is going to make to the server. What's going to be the URL of that get call say it's going to be slash books. Uh, a callback function will be called with request object response object. Whenever the client, uh, which is the Angular application, is going to hit the server for the data to get the books. Okay, so it, at that time, this callback is going to be uh, called over here. But now I need to query MongoDB to get the books. Okay, to get the books from the MongoDB database. Now this is where Mongoose helps you. Uh, now people coming from you know a background of ORM object relational mapping or if you have done hibernate or something like that you know you will feel that it's very much like that mongoose okay so what do you do in mongoose is mongoose says that for every collection that you have so you know you could call it as a table uh, but you know in mongodb language it's called as a collection so books is a collection uh, create a model you know create a class okay create a javascript class uh, for it uh, for every collection that you have Okay, and you know then the querying becomes really simple. Okay, so what are we going to do is in LIB app server? I'm going to create a new folder say models and inside models I'm going to have uh, say I'm going to have say uh, Create a new file say book.js because this file is going to be for my collection Which is you know the books collection. So I give it a singular name. Okay, and then standard mongoose code. So constant const uh, require from mongoose. Okay, what do you require from mongoose? A schema class. Okay, you'll come to know the meaning and the model uh, class specifically. And then create a new schema. Okay, so for every collection that you have, that is say books as, as of now, create a new schema. So new schema. Uh, pass in a JavaScript object to it. 
now in the schema you can define your collection you know that your collection uh, your documents inside the collection will have title price and pages attribute okay they'll always have title price pages and they are required uh, the data type of title is string the data type of price and pages is number you can define that in your schema okay and you should define it in your schema that there will be a title attribute in your mongodb document uh, you know which you save in your collection uh, it's going to be uh, required uh, true it's going to be required true it's a required attribute okay and the data type is going to be a string okay that's title then on every mongodb document uh, is going to have a price okay which is uh, as in as of now i will give it required you can play with it later the type is going to be a number okay and then i'm going to have pages which is also going to follow the same fate so required true and type is going to be number here okay so that's a schema that you define and then just export from your module dot exports module dot exports a new model object okay a new model object an object of this class model where you specify the name of your model okay which should be the singular of the collection name so collection name is books the name of your model should be book with a capital b okay comma the schema okay the schema uh, which you created over here is something that you export from this book uh, book.js uh, module okay standard standard stuff that you do with uh, mongoose okay now on the other end in server.js what you could do is in server.js uh, just import okay so const say book model because because that's what you're exporting from here you're exporting a model so import a model here so uh, you know const uh, const book model uh, require require from where current directory models the book model okay now comes the fun part after doing so much say you know when my get endpoint is hit by the angular application which is slash books i want to query for all the book documents in my books collection very simple just use the book model dot call a method find now remember this method queries the database mongodb database for all the books in the books collection it's an io call it's a synchronous code so what you need to do is uh, yes, a sync await. Yeah, so make it await, and you can make the method in which you are using it as asynchronous. Okay, so do read about async await. Yeah, as, yeah, as many of you must be knowing it. And then it returns you the books from the database. Okay, and yes, it's going to return you the books as an array of book objects. Yeah, it's going to return you as an array of you know JSON objects, uh, book objects rather, and then send it back in the response. So response dot status, response dot status, two hundred uh, dot send books okay as simple as it could get uh, we can try it out by the way we can try out this endpoint even without calling it from the angular layer uh, what we can do is localhost 3001 right so we can just come here be the localhost 1001 slash books there you go okay you get a list of books uh, you, you get a json array of json objects of all the books which are there in the database and this is your endpoint which your angular application is supposed to hit okay so let's get to the angular application okay let's get to the angular application so i'm just going to temporarily now change my hat from the server programmer to the client programmer okay so i, I would come to the angular application uh, i would go mainly to the book list component so here is the book list component uh, specifically uh, i would go to the typescript code of book list component okay where uh, i would want to make a call to this endpoint for the data okay yeah so how how do i uh, you know how do i go about uh, for this one okay uh, it's pretty pretty cool pretty neat is uh, first things first in the app module of angular you need to require or import the http module of angular for making an http call okay so angular slash common slash http so you just got to import the HTTP module standard stuff, HTTP client module rather. Uh, just put it in the imports, HTTP client module. This will ensure that the HTTP client module is available uh, in the entire application. Okay, it's available in the entire application. Okay, so save this one. And coming back here, I'm just gonna import from uh, current directory, uh, so uh, from, sorry, at the rate angular, 
slash common slash HTTP and HTTP client class, you know, which we can use for making a web service call to my server over here. Okay, so this HTTP client I'm going to inject inside my constructor. Do read about dependency injection. Obviously, when you get into the depths of Angular, but as of now, I'm just going to say private HTTP. Uh, people coming from a spring background or you know using dependency injection may be able to understand what i'm doing over here okay people not coming from a dependency injection background may find this little voodoo-ish but yeah it's just pretty cool do read about it that's dependency injection so i inject the http client object here and then in the ng on init function uh it's a, it's a function that is called after the component is initialized i would make a call to this endpoint okay now how would i make a call to this endpoint you could make it this dot http dot Okay, this dot HTTP dot get uh, the endpoint that you want to call. Okay, now this returns an observable. Okay, because remember this is asynchronous code. Again, this comes asynchronous code because from here you're gonna you're gonna make a call, a web service call to your server. It's an asynchronous code, so it returns an observer. Okay, it's uh, you know one of the classes from the RxJS library which Angular uses. Okay, just get an idea about it. On that observer, just call the subscribe method. Okay, this subscribe method will be called whenever uh, you know so this subscribe method you pass a callback to the subscribe method by the way okay this callback function will be called whenever you get this data from the server okay which will be passed as an input over here okay it will be passed as an input uh, to this callback function say books okay and i can put a debugger here you know just to verify that yes am i, am I getting the data from the server properly or no okay so i save this all i'll come back to my plan project uh just put an inspect console open hit it the debugger gets called books that I see. Yes, it's the array of book objects, uh, array of you know objects uh, that I get from the server. Okay, where uh, if you see every array has a book object, every book object has title, price, pages. Okay, over here also every book object has title, price, pages. Okay, so you know you you get that. Okay, now great. So this books data is coming from the server. Okay, now this books data you know which is an array, uh, it has title price pages which i want to display in the gui over here okay now i'm going to use very simple angular binding so what am i going to do is in the component class i'm going to create an attribute books okay which is going to be uh, you know an any array uh, any array okay an array of any objects okay so it's typescript yeah so books which is going to be any array and then whatever books i get here i assign it to the books attribute so this dot books is equal to books uh specifically uh so obviously i'm going to make this also as data type so that i can assign an any array to an any array and then this dot books which is you know which is this attribute i'm going to bind my html to that attribute where this tr is supposed to be dynamic okay i don't have to have the static trs so i'm going to remove this and to this tr i'm going to give an ng4 it's a common uh, directive of angular so it's like a loop uh, it allows you to loop up a template so let say book of of say books books is basically the one which you want to bind it with uh, over here that's books uh, here i want to print the title of the book so use the angular syntax book which is the variable dot title uh, again book dot price and again uh, the book variable book dot pages okay uh, so i save this one I come back here. Just read on this, and just refresh the page. Hey, look at that! Yep. Yeah. So this is this is the data which is coming from the database. Uh, you, I go to add books, list books. Yep. This data is indeed coming from the database. Uh, you know where our Angular application has hit a server. Okay, and the server has given us, uh, you know, specifically the data. Uh, you know, specifically over here okay which which we are then showing it in the table in this dynamic table using uh you know the angular binding and uh, using the angular directive ng4 okay where this tr would repeat the number of books times and then this is a loop variable use the loop variable to get the title use the loop variable to get the price use the loop variable to get the pages okay very simple obviously when you get into depth into of angular binding you'll understand that but yeah whatever data comes here I assign it to an attribute which I declare here in the book list component and then to this attribute I bind this HTML over here. Okay, so as simple as it could get now To complete the loop uh, definitely when I go to add books, 
I add some books here. I add some price. I add some pages when I click save I would want to make a post call to my server. So what do I need is uh, I need a post endpoint. Okay, I definitely need a post endpoint at my server side. So again, I change my hat. I go to the server. So I, I go to the server code uh, and I uh, like, you know, I go to server.js. Okay, where I give one more endpoint one more rest endpoint app dot post. Okay, because obviously this rest endpoint would be called uh, whenever the user wants to make a post call. Okay, uh, slash books. Okay, uh, the callback will be called whenever the user makes a post call with the request and response objects. Okay, now the user is going to send a request in the request it's going to send the book data in the post request the user is going to send the book data is going to be you know imagine it's going to be a json object which, which is going to have title price pages how do i retrieve that data from the on the request object i can call body uh, gives me the book data that the user would send in the request you know the new book object that he wants to create now this book i want to insert it in the collection over here uh, you know mongoose to the rescue uh, book model just call the method create. Just call the method create. Pass in the book object. You know that you have got from the request. This is going to be an asynchronous call because you know it's going to make a call to the database. So await on it and make sure that the function which you are using it, uh, you know, it's an asynchronous function. And this will give you the newly created book object. This is going to give you the newly created book objects in new book. Okay, which then I can send it in the response. So response dot status. It's a successful post two zero one dot send. Uh, the new book object. Okay, so a very simple uh, post endpoint, uh, you know, that I've made uh, for the books. Okay, now, uh, uh, so you have the post endpoint web service endpoint ready. You have the get web service endpoint ready. Awesome. Now uh, you can you can even you know you can even try out this post endpoint. You know whether this is working or no. You know without your Angular application. So for that you can use some REST client tool. I use Postman. So Chrome, you know, apps. I have postman with me. So just to see, you know, whether it's working fine or no, the post endpoint that I've written. So create a new basic uh, so just cancel this one. Uh, I make a post request, uh, localhost 3001 slash books. The header, I have to send a header, which is content type application slash JSON uh, from the client to the server. So basically to inform to the server that I'm sending JSON data. How do I plan to send the data as a JSON data? Where I would want to send a JSON object with the title of the book, say uh, five point someone. Okay, uh, you know the price of the book. Okay, which is say nine hundred, and the pages of the book, uh, which is uh, just a minute. So yeah, so sending the uh, you know, sending the pay, uh, sending the pages of the book. Okay, so whatever I would want to send with the pages, so it's like uh, 560 pages. Okay, let's see whether this endpoint works or no. All right, it gives me the newly created book object with a new ID. Has it come in our database? Let's see. Hey, there you go. That's a new book that we added. Okay, so which means that assures that even before you go to the Angular side of the coding, your post endpoint at the server side is working. Okay. Now go back and put the angular hat where the hat of the client uh, over here. Now I go to the book form component book form component dot HTML. Okay, the HTML file which is there the DS file which is there. What am I going to do is for each of these GUI elements over here title price and pages. I'm going to bind them with some attributes over here. So title string price. That's ang angular binding for you string. Okay, pages string. Okay, I'm going to bind each one of these to each one of these attributes over here. Okay, how am I going to do that? Okay, one thing that you need to do in app module of Angular, the way we did it for HTTP client module, import. Okay, import from at the rate Angular slash forms. Okay, the forms module because we want form handling over here. So forms module, uh, put it in the imports. The forms module, you know, which you have imported, so that it's available throughout the entire Angular application. Once you have imported the forms module, now what you can do is you can easily do the binding between this GUI element, this property, this GUI element, this property. How can you do it? Very simple. Once you have imported the forms module, uh, you can, uh, you know, you can do a two-way binding using ng model, which is from the forms module, equal to. Uh, bind it with 
say titan okay so bind it with title you know what will happen which means is if anything if anything changes in title over here it will sync up in the gui if anything changes in the gui it will sync up back into the title attribute so that's two way binding yeah so you'll read once you read you'll come to know and then over here i have uh, you know another ng model okay two way binded so uh, over here uh, bind it with price attribute okay and i have another ng ng model uh, bind it with pages okay so you, you bind it with price by, uh, title price and pages now when i click the button okay i'll just make it as uh, when i click this button i would want some function to be called over here say on save you know a rich returns void i would want this function to be called when i press the button what do you do is you click, you give a click binding okay and you specify the function that should be called that is on save function you write that yeah on save function should be called and actually you call the function over here on save now once that's been done uh you know let's query for this title price and pages you know where, whether really whatever the user enters in the text field does it come in this title price and pages or no so const from the current object you can query for title price and pages okay and let's put a debugger and see like you know whatever the user types on the gui is it really coming here so let's see so saving this one and going back here so it should yeah load up my application i enter a book say book one price 300 pages 120 click save so if i had to see title awesome book one price 300 pages 120 the data that i wanted is coming over here okay and with the right you know attributes also as in right data type also this is number number and this is string okay that's that's really awesome okay so great you know so you know the data is coming here you know which means i'm having the data here so once you have the data be ready for making an http call to the server the endpoint uh, same step so import import the http client module from after date angular slash common slash http so import the http client module and inject it so private http http client module and then you can use that for making a post call so this dot http dot post post or the url so the url uh, is going to be now this is going to be standard code guys so the url is going to be this one okay uh, comma the data which is going to be a javascript object okay it's going to be a javascript object where you send in the title you send in the price you send in the pages okay so title equal to title price equal to price pages equal to pages okay and one extra thing that you need to send a javascript object another javascript object uh, which has the headers attribute okay which is new http headers because remember guys you need to send to the server that uh, content type header that i'm sending you json data so you send a new http header where you specify a header which is content i can type this is standard code guys don't worry about it content type and then the content type that you want to send to the server in the header is application slash json okay so this entire thing uh you know which i'm trying to post okay uh, gives me oh sorry it's http client and not http client module sorry it's HTTP client. all right so this entire property is an asynchronous call it gives me an observable okay on which i could just do a subscribe uh the callback function of subscribe will be called whenever i get a, uh, you know a response from the server it will be called with the new book data okay from the server uh, i want to clear up my form how do i clear up my form if i you know if i just change title to empty string price to empty string and pages to empty string the form over here will clear up because of the two way binding okay so that's what i need to do is this dot title is going to be i just going to make it null probably this uh, that should be enough to clear up the fields this dot price null and then pages sorry this dot pages is equal to null and then probably give an alert though not a good thing to give an alert but it's okay book save successfully okay something like that uh, that you're going to give here okay and uh, yeah standard code so let's see whether this works or no it's coming back here it refreshes the page let's create a book say uh, rich sad or that 900 1200 click save all right book save successfully 
and my form resets. When I come to list books, I'm able to see the book rich dad poor dad. Okay, so yeah, that's working. And if you refresh your page, yes, you still get that book, which means your book was saved in the uh, you know in the MongoDB database, uh, which is which is yeah specifically. 